Okay, I think we are live. We are live once again. We are back in service. Um, we have been driving along um, in the county with the Val Verde County Sheriff, Sheriff Joe Frank. And right now he's showing us, this is his tower. Okay, Sheriff, let's talk about this tower. I'm gonna flip this around. Tell me what this, whoa. So this, this is our radio communication tower. Okay. And it's, you see, it has cameras. Yeah. This first camera right here on this on this leg right here. Okay. That's going right to the school that's over this hill. Okay. And then if you go to this leg right here, you follow it up, you see a beige yep. or tan looking camera. Uh huh. And then you go back up up, up a little higher. Yep. You see another battery of cameras there. Uh huh. So they're monitoring any illegal traffic coming over this community. Okay. Step over here. And what you what he was saying was his, one of his sheriff's deputies uh, lives right here and at county residence so that he can monitor this and keep an eye on this for, for the sheriff. Okay, so, so this, what's going on over here? So this is the community of Comstock. Okay. So uh, Mexico is probably eight miles okay. uh, due southwest. Okay. So these cameras are monitoring all this area back in here. Okay. How far do those cameras reach? Uh, one of those is an eight mile camera. Okay, so you can see basically <clears throat> to Mexico yes. from here. Yes. Okay, so what's the, is there an issue of migrants coming in to this area or is this kind of help? So, so, so the issue here is, you know, uh, migrants or illegals come through here, come through this draw down here, but more importantly, we have a school located right over there. Okay. Okay, you see the green roof? Green roof, okay, yep. That's the school. Okay. So it just kind of added added protection to our, to this community here. Okay. What has been the issue? Or like what, how many have we seen come into this community? And, and, you know? and, and to this area, it hasn't been that many here. Okay. Here. Okay. Because the, these are the people that are coming across that, that don't want to get caught. Right, it's, it's so, yeah. But there's been some go caught, caught here. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're probably they're, not gonna come through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're they're gonna come in that in that little valley down, down that valley. because they're following that tower. Okay, and that's what he was saying is they use these towers kind of as like a beacons, <clears throat> as like networks. It's, it's just a guide. It's a guide. Well, when you got <laughs> when this is what you're looking at, you kind of you got to have some kind of guide, I suppose. Otherwise, yeah, you'll get lost. You will get lost, and you will end up being body out in the field that never is found probably wow okay so this guy these cameras can look all the way to mexico it's about eight miles that way so do we want you want more of this across your county yes more of these towers some, some of these some strategic locations yeah uh, will be helpful yeah so some more towers with cameras in strategic locations would help with how many people are coming in? What was that? I was just saying, is that funded by your county, those cameras? So, so those cameras right there are, were purchased through Stone Garden Grants. Okay. Okay. And uh, there's, a, there's a user fee, there's a maintenance fee, it's not cheap. Uh, but. Does that, do those like, how long, is Stone Garden kind of contracted to work or to help? So, you know, I know that we've had Stone Garden money in this county since 2006, and maybe even before that. Okay. So it's a continuous okay. reoccurring grant. Okay. Uh, and so it's not and it's expiring or running out anytime soon? No. Okay. So it, its intent is to basically commit our support to Border Patrol. Okay. And we support our federal partners. So they, you know, the funds are funneled. The process begins with Border Patrol. It goes, it goes to, to FEMA. Mm -hmm. and then it comes back down uh, through the distributed through the through the through the state. Okay. Those funds. Okay. So, so and then it's the, allocated that way. It's allocated that way. Okay. So there is an accountability piece. Okay. So the the twelve sheriffs, the twenty sheriffs <clears throat> along the border. Years ago, we were funded by the state of Texas. We had a, a grant that would allow for overtime, would allow for vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, those funds have 
gone away. So the participation of the coalition is not as strong as it used to be mm. because it's like everything else. What draws people together? Money. To work together money is going to take money. Right? Yes. So it's, it's going to take funds mm -hmm. to, keep, to keep it going. Okay. So uh, for whatever reasons, you know, six years ago, the funds were were taken away. Uh, you know, so we've lost a little connectivity with some of the sheriffs along the border. Okay. But, you know, we still communicate. We're not getting funded. We meet twice a year at a conference. And, you know, we... Uh, we have training and we we have roundtable discussions with Border Patrol uh, from the from the uh, the force Border Patrol regions mm -hmm. or sectors with all the border sheriffs there mm -hmm. and you know we discuss this is what we're seeing in, mm -hmm. in certain areas and this is a new technique or whatever that the, the smugglers are using. Okay. So, so it's like convergence of the minds. Like yes. you guys are all sharing what, and like you said, every problem is so vastly different. So you might have a solution that another sheriff didn't think about. So coming together and sharing that is, has been really important. Yes. Okay. And we help, and we help each other. For example, during the, uh, <clears throat> when we were in control of the money, the, we had, our executive director was in control. Uh, we never had any negative findings in the way that those funds were used. But if a sheriff in a certain county, because there was an increase in crime in his county and he had to spend more resources and more manpower, if he ran short, the other sheriff, the other 18, 19 sheriffs would get together. How much can, how much can you spare out of, out of your funds and how much can you spare? So at the end of the day, that sheriff, you know, so I got $30,000 extra thanks to the other participating sheriffs to allow me to be able to handle my business. And you can't do that you right can't now. do that now. Okay. Is there any way to get that control back or to negotiate so, something where you can work with that? That is now controlled through the governor's office and DPS. And So not tomorrow then? No. Okay. Not tomorrow. And I, th and I think, you know, that that was a... I think that they saw that we were unified, that we were strong, and uh, they didn't want to support the, they felt that they could do a better job, uh, for, for example, with cameras. Uh, they, so they went to a, a different type of camera. So they, they thought that they had a better plan. But at the end of the day, when a person calls 911, where's that phone gonna ring? At the sheriff's office. It's not gonna ring at DPS. It's not gonna ring at Border Patrol. You know, the, the call is coming to us. You know, and we will, you know, we, we need to route it someplace else but the calls are coming to us. Yeah, they're not going to the governor. They're not going to the governor. Right, so, so it's kind of like your fence. That's what I was gonna say. They didn't really ask mm -hmm. what works for you guys. You mm -hmm. kind of felt you felt like you didn't. They didn't really get the feedback on the wall, and it kind of made a worse situation that was fine. Broke something that, or fixed something that wasn't broken. And so this is kind of a similar situation. Yes. So how can you? How can you? I mean, can the sheriff's departments like get together and do something different, or? Or figure out how to so, have so, communication with them separately or so so we are together we brought that that issue up that the funding needs to go through the sheriff because we we know the, we know our communities you they're know living it yeah, yeah we're living it these troopers that they brought in they don't live here they're from north texas they're from east texas they're not from the border area so they don't have you know they're here to do a job they don't have ownership of my community and the long-term plan isn't necessarily there because they don't have a plan to be here long term so their ideas might not be in line with what you need long term mm -hmm. okay yeah um so we were talking before we got back on live here uh we were talking about the dangers here we've now been driving around with sheriff joe frank since we got with you at 10 a.m 
been driving around now for several hours and we we've encountered some migrants at a, at a mission that were being helped after being processed we went to the Rio Grande we did not encounter any migrants we literally walked up to the river when we were first coming over here we've been talking about the perception that a lot of people have had and both my mom and I were talking about how many people reached out and they were like be safe be safe be safe but you kind of have a different message that people need to understand about what's going on out here let's talk about the safety um, and and that it's not necessarily a war zone like people perceive yeah it's not a it's, it's not a war zone uh, some of these people they're fleeing their country because of their government their socialist government they're fleeing for a better life uh, are there some people that might be mixed up with them that are criminal? Definitely. I'm not going to say they're not. But those people are coming out into these remote areas because they don't want to get caught. They don't want to turn themselves in. So they're probably not going to encounter a lot of people. They're going to be, the people that they're impacting most are ranchers and things out here in these very rural areas. They're not going to be impacting the people like me and, and Jenny here visiting. No, they're not. It's not a war zone. You can feel free to walk. In, you know, in any area of this county, and be safe. Why do you think that the perception is is altered? Because it is. I mean, people do think that it's. I even thought it was a lot more dangerous than what we're experiencing. So, why do you think that perception is there? I think you know the messaging. I think the social media platforms that are out there. You know, they carry. You know, you got people on the. You know, you got you got people on the far right. You got people on the far left. That's you true. know, and you know, uh, and, and I invite anyone to come down here, you know, just mm -hmm. and experience it for yourself. I mean, and I think that that's important because I think that not only did we experience, are we experiencing that it is not a war, you know, a war zone, but we're also learning why things are happening the way they're happening, why migrants are coming into certain communities and not others, where they're coming from, why they are coming over here. We're learning a lot of other things that, that really we're not finding out anywhere else than if we came here ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so that's why he is encouraging anybody. It's, it's, not, it's, not what, it's not the tape on loop that you're seeing over and over. It's not the one scene that you're seeing over and over. You have, you, you have to go and find them. You have to go, we, we did go and look for migrants crossing the Rio Grande and there weren't any at that time. So it's it's certainly a different, um, different than what we expected when we were when we were coming here. I mean, there are certainly, there is definitely a crisis. I'm not trying to minimize that at all by saying that. We definitely have a massive influx of people and they are definitely strapped with their manpower. But I think that it is important to understand that it isn't this, this war zone, that it isn't, you know, people aren't crossing the Rio Grande wielding knives and coming across trying to hurt people and trying to take over. It's, these people are trying to get a better life for themselves. Should they be doing it legally? We all agree that yes, they should. And should there be a better process? We all agree that yes, there should. So, you know, it's one of those things that it is, it's the reality of what's going on down here. We have thousands of people coming in daily across the border, across, across the whole the border. border. Now, I, I don't also want to minimize that for Sheriff uh, Wilmont in Arizona and in, in Yuma County or Sheriff Daniels, they're seeing a different thing over there. Mm -hmm. And that's something else that we have to explain too, yes. is each border sheriff has a different issue and each, and that goes for Arizona too. So talk a little bit about what they're dealing with in Arizona and why it's different from here. So over there, they're dealing with people that are smuggling drugs across the border. They're backpacking it. They're seeing it in their cameras. At the same time, they're seeing, you know, the immigrants coming across that want to turn themselves in. Mm -hmm. But the people that they're they're seeing, you know, they're 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 catching the backpackers that are carrying narcotics into their country. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're seeing, they're dealing, they're having to deal with unaccompanied children, mm -hmm. uh, and that's both Sheriff Daniels and and Sheriff Wilmot. What do you do? What do they do with unaccompanied children? How come you guys aren't dealing with that problem? So we, we do have some of that, but there's a process in place uh, here. And I, I mean, it's being, we're not housing them here. They're not being held here. They're taken care of immediately. But, you know, 
we're not seeing the the armed incursions here in Rodriguez County mm -hmm. that they're seeing over there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I invite you to visit, you know, both those sheriffs mm -hmm. because their story is a little bit different than mine. Yeah. But, you know, but at the end of the day, whatever comes through the southwest border in some form or fashion is going to affect the entire country. The entire country. Yeah. Because they're being processed and then being shipped, literally shipped out to, to their families or to their new guardian or their destination, wherever they're going. Yes. And that then it becomes everybody else's issue to deal with. Mm -hmm. Because you guys, once they're gone, they're gone from here. Like you said, they're not staying here. They're not staying here. They're None of them. Here. Not one has stayed here. So, I mean, there's 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 frustration, you know, from people in other states. But there's what can we what can we do? Because we can't stop them at the border. You know, you know. So this administration, I think, has to be aggressive, and you know stop it. Put a stop to it. He can't sustain this forever. This country cannot support it long term. Cannot. So this this administration I think has to has to take take the hard road. Make a decision. Stop what is happening and and regroup. And you know there has to be at the end of the day, there has to be a process, as I told you earlier. But right now, this is not working. Mm -hmm. This is not working for anyone. Yeah. So now, the unaccompanied minors, um, there were some things in the very like early stages of this kind of influx we've been following since March. There were some children that were coming across with bracelets.